All right, let's uh, begin. Thank you uh, for coming to our Reflection on the Word. And Sister Phyllis, thank you for being with us. We have uh, not had one of these uh, since Sister Phyllis did one for us um, way back in August. Uh, so, um, so we're grateful uh, to gather again uh, in, in this fashion. Uh, we are uh, also uh, providing this through Zoom. And so when you have a comment, I may walk up close to you uh, with my camera uh, so, that, uh, so that you can be heard uh, by them uh, as well. So without further ado, um, Sister Phyllis. Well, thank you everyone for coming. You know, it's hard to see. Can, can you guys move? So I <laughs> see you. you can move over that way. But... Thank you. It's very nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Father did a good job with these readings, let me tell you. <laughs> anyway, as I read the readings for this Sunday, I thought of all that our world and our countries are going through right now. So there's war profiteering from war, threat of nuclear disaster, famine, drought, floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, dry arid farmlands that can grow nothing right now, deforestation, gas and oil profits skyrocketing and wages stagnating, attack on elected leaders, trying to cut Medicare and Medicaid funds, trying to cut social security, climate change, and homelessness. Of course, the list goes on with racism, plagues, especially, <clears throat> plagues, especially COVID, cutting of funds to public education, criminalizing mental health, black and brown people put in prison more often and longer than white people for the same offenses, and escalating gun deaths. So what do we do? So this is what we do. We begin and continue to encounter God, listening to God's word to us, discerning how to act to better the world. Or as Sister Joan Chittister says, the spiritually mature person does not rely on God for miracles. They rely on God for strength and courage, for insight and hope, for vision and endurance. With God then, we act not just by ourselves, but by joining with others. There are many groups like Pax Christi, Brady Against Gun Violence, Laudato Si Movement, Southern Poverty Law Center, People Against the Death Penalty, Metro Alliance for the Common Good, or MACG, our own Parish Justice Committee, and our own St. Vincent de Paul, among many others. And all these work for the alleviation of pain, suffering, and injustice. They take one part of all the troubles in our day and work to alleviate those injustices. We do hear of many injustices being righted and the earth being cared for better. We can rejoice and get some energy to continue on. Within it all is God, suffering with, encouraging, loving everyone, giving compassion, love, and mercy through the people who hear God's call and work for the betterment of all. At times we hear and see what Malachi says, for you who fear or reverence my name, there will arise the sun of justice with its healing rays. It also means taking time to be with God by ourselves in contemplative prayer or out in nature, listening to God speaking through nature to us. 
and also being with a community that prays, like our parish that gathers each Sunday to listen to God and to each other, supporting each other, while we also just have fun. It is, as Pope Francis says of the synodal process, that we place our trust in the Holy Spirit who is now and always will be our advocate and guide. So how do we persevere? Dennis Gordon says, he says, the Lord, Lord through, wisdom, through wisdom, draws, draws us closer, closer to God, God in times of trouble. Or as St. Therese the Little Flower says, I see that it is enough to acknowledge our nothingness and like children, surrender ourselves into the arms of the good God. If we surrender ourselves into the arms of the good God, we have the Holy Spirit within us right here, right here, to be our advocate and guide. We need to continue to listen to the Spirit. Then we can work for justice as Jesus did with mercy, compassion, thoughtfulness, openness to other points of view, listening to those who disagree with us, and perhaps, but not always, negotiating workable solutions that really work for everyone, not just for those who declare they are right and everyone else is wrong. Sometimes, as Jesus noted, you will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will save your lives. So we walk, being in the arms of the good God, speaking what the Holy Spirit gives us to speak, and persevering in walking God's way to change the world without violence, but with love. Let's just take a couple moments of silence and think about this. And also, if you remember anything that Father said in his homily, can add to it. And so, let's. So, if anyone has any thoughts, open up the. One, one other thing that. One other thing that Jesus said, I don't know if you said it too, and I missed it, but it was about giving us the words or giving us the, the strength of the, whatever it is, to do that, do that work. And I thought that was really encouraging because I couldn't, I can't imagine in the current condition taking on and being to that point where you're really, really challenged and to trust that, okay, it's going to come. I, I don't have to worry about what to say. It will be there. Right. That, right. that was encouraging because right. the other thing was overwhelming. <laughs> That's right. That's why I said the Holy Spirit is with us. Yeah. And we listen because the Holy Spirit will give us what we're going to say. Okay. Yeah. I think along that same line is that there's so much in the world and in our lives that's completely beyond our control. But to always remember that we are not alone, that Jesus gives us what we need in our heart or in our you know, psyche to, to face things that we thought we couldn't face. We, we find that inner, inner strength because we're blessed by the spirit and we believe in Jesus Christ as Lord. So that if we trust that as a human, we're gonna fail, but we trust that he will give us, whether it's the courage to go into the furnace and die or to speak up when no one else will or step forward when somebody else doesn't have the strength to step forward. We know that, yeah, you're right. There are some things we can't change. We can't change what we don't want to change the, the natural flow of stuff, what nature does. We're beginning to ruin that. So we need to change our part and making the, sure the earth survives. Uh, yeah, I, um, I think sometimes that it's very easy to feel overwhelmed. I do often, 
Um, I watch the news, there's war, there's lies, there's confusion, there's um, uh, uh, people uh, dying from hunger, going without. <clears throat> and so uh, what I've had to do and what has so far really enabled me to get through I start each day first by thanking God for giving me another one because it's 74, there's no guarantees. And then I say, help me to serve wherever, whenever, however I'm called. And by saying that, it makes me feel like in my own small world, I'll do whatever I can however I can do it. And so, you know, it just, um, I guess, gives me the strength to go forward and hope that everybody else is trying to do the same thing. And sometimes we never really know what impact we've had, but we still need to continue to like you say, to, to do with that, where you are right there, what needs to be done, do whatever it is you can do and, and do it. And can I say something? The outcome of whatever it is we've done, but. Along, along that line, saying that you don't know what effect mm -hmm. it have. It's, it, that kind of goes in with um, what, what Father Tony mentioned today. Do we even know how deep our faith is? How faithful are we? And it's, it, it's easy for me to say, boy, you're not very faithful <laughs> if you're acting like that just because someone cut you off on the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, um, but <laughs> so it, 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 you, have to, you have to kind of reward yourself that yes, you are faithful and, and, and you want to continue to be faithful and um, even to be even more faithful probably even begs the question again. And probably even more deeply, but that I think that's maybe the path to the path to goodness and righteousness. <laughs> yeah. right. And sometimes when we make a mistake and we realize it, it's really a learning to say, okay, now I know this, so I don't have to do it again. Of course, if you're like me, then you do it again. You say, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes whether you think okay, I didn't do it that time. <laughs> so you're right. So I wonder, oh, sorry, Go ahead. I, I just want to give those of you on Zoom an opportunity to uh, chime in uh, and I'll do the best I can to make you heard. You know, I would like to say something. Um, you know, God, I know that when, when I really think that everything's coming down on me, I have to remember that somewhere God says, he doesn't give us more than we can handle. So I have to remind myself that God thinks I can handle this. So I need to keep the faith in him and, and get through it. And um, in all different kinds of ways, I mean, not just what's going around on the world, but there's times when it feels like, you know, like my health or somebody else's health is just coming down on me. And I think, what can I do? I just, should I really be here? And then I have to remind myself over and over again, God doesn't give me more than I can handle. So he knows I can handle this. And somehow I make it through it. So I think he gives us the tools to make it through. Well said. Thank you. Um, Marianne, you were. I'm, I'm reminded as, as you were talking, Sister Phillips. Um, I'm before I do contemplation in the mornings. I've been reading this about you know the Jesuits, twelve or twenty steps about, and it speaks about um, consolation and dissolution, dis dissolution, and and when your spirit, when the spirit is 
calling or you're following the spirit, not, not to ever, you, we both, we all hold both of those things. And then the spirit is, is calling us. You, you know, that things don't keep getting in your way. Um, but when it's, when you're kind of headed on the wrong or not, not right or wrong, but a, a different path and maybe it's more ecocentric or who, who knows, but not what the spirit's calling us to, yeah, to just listen to that, to that voice and, um, and give yourself that space, um, you know, yes. that quiet space to, to let evolve what, you know, what is coming from the spirit. And it's a really hard thing to do, but also I like that, not not putting yourself down that I'm bad or good or whatever to just that that's really Can not part of it. <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate uh, you, you know, talking about that piece for justice and you know, how, to, how to go about in that world. But you're right, in prayer sometimes we feel God present mm -hmm. every day and we, and we have this great feeling of whatever it is, peace and love and stuff. But in prayer too, there's what we call desolation where you don't feel God at all. You think is God even around? Yeah. We just need to know that's where faithfulness comes in. God is around and is still working within us even though we might not feel that presence. So. And working through others. Yes, speaking of desolation, you know, um, I couldn't turn the TV on on Tuesday because I, you know, those red waves or whatever. I, I just was so, um, I, I didn't want me to go down that dark hole and already knew that, you know, what happens, happens. And um, I've learned to look through these, uh, certainly last three years of darkness, and I could say last four years plus, um, certainly in the political agitation and just um, uh, seeing communities attack and demonize people who don't happen to agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, so what helps me, and I think this is the Holy Spirit nudging me that when, when I read something or hear, hear uh, something, I look on purpose for good around me. And that has become my armor. Not that those negative ads didn't cause me to push back and stuff, but very quickly or quicker than I used to do, I find myself just um, reassuring myself that God made the world. There are many, many wonderful things happening here. Many good people that are not um, maybe Democrats or Republicans or independents, but they are grounded in truth. What, you know, Barack Obama said, the arc of the, is it the universe is long, but it turns toward justice. And it was, that was MLK who got it from somebody else, but that was on his rug in the Oval Office. And that's when I became aware of that. And I thought that helps that, you know, the, what, you know, the battle has been fought and, you know, good has already triumphed over evil and it continues to do that. Not that evil will disappear, but anyway, <laughs> that's my thought for today. We, we have time for one or two more comments. Remember our idea around this is to not gather for a long, long time. Um, so um, yes, the fruitful time. Um, any, anybody want the last word? This is the source of that quote. It's from a progressive Unitarian minister, Theodore Parker. And uh, he wrote in 1853, 
I do not pretend to understand the moral universe. The arc is a long one. My eye reaches but little ways. I cannot calculate the curve and complete the figure by the experience of sight. I can divine it by conscience. And from what I see, I am sure it bends towards justice. Hmm. Hmm. Amen. Amen to that, yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you all. Appreciate it. Okay. Until next time.